Hello, and welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. Today, I'm going to talk about what the dream key is worth it and whether, and it's also talk about my processes or process of thinking as to whether to buy the pass or not. I couldn't really afford the dream key, but I could afford the believe key. And I was deciding, should I get a new iPhone 13 for cinematic filming or the believe key? Those of you who watch my channel know exactly what I chose. I'm going to tell you why I chose an iPhone 13 instead of the, uh, instead of, uh, the believe key right now. i tell you, is the believe or dream key really worth it? We're going to go way above all those options. So let's go. Let's share the screen. And we're going to go ahead. Okay, so here we go. So this is what the calendar looks like for the dream key. So let's talk about what you are promised with the dream key. Okay. Let's start off with the magic key. The magic key is basically the SoCal Select Pass. So you're promised. So Monday through Friday. And then you have blockout dates of like the weekend. So all these slashes are blockout dates. And all the things with the little... These little gray, like a uh, gray, like warning signs or whatever, are no reservations available. So all these are blockout dates, but pretty much all the reservation days are available. So for like October 18th, and you can't go to Disneyland, or you can't start off at Disneyland on the third, the, on the December second. But pretty much every single day is available throughout um, the rest of the, or you can't even make reservations into these months. But for the time you can make reservations. They're they're pretty available, right? So the enchant key, which is the SoCal Select Pass, if you're if this works for you, if you don't like to go weekends, like to go during the week, this it is worth it. This was perfect for you because plenty of available days and it's it, it's great. Let's go to the enchant key, <laughs> kind of like the Southern California Pass, right? This one. Kind of worth it, but again, you have a lot more blackout days than you're expecting. You can't go on the weekend, so same thing. We can go some week or more weekdays, it seems, and there's a lot of them available in November and October. Yeah, a lot, uh, next this coming week is pretty is full, but you can go later this month. So do the Halloween stuff, and even so do the uh, Christmas stuff. Um, this week right here, um, and in December and even into January 7th, uh, that first, that's not even, that's, uh, these are block editors, so this is the first available day, so that's good. So I'd say it's worth it. Then you come over to the Believe Key. All right? So the Believe Key is one of the first, uh, the first of two passes that allow weekend days. And not, not even all weekend days, like these Saturdays are blocked out here in October, and these weekends are just gone. But you can't go tomorrow. Today's October 9th, so you can't go tomorrow. You start off at Disneyland. But weekends, if they're either they're blocked out or just no reservations available for the weekends that you can make reservations, are they're all gone. You can go during the week, though, if that is your if that is an option for you and the first week of January. Uh, but if you like if you want weekends, if you want the past weekends, you I mean you can save several hundred dollars by just getting the enchant key go during the week since you can't really go on many weekends or the only weekend you can go is tomorrow um with this belief key and that's all the way through next year january 2022 um so again if weekends if you're getting for the weekends belief key is not worth it you might as well just jump down several hundred dollars to the enchant key um and then we do the dream key the no this is the big one because it's no block out dates by the way belief key is 50 percent parking but no uh, block of days, parking included, all that thing. People get this because of the no block out days and maybe even uh, a Genie Plus add-on later on. We'll see. But with, with something with no block out dates, it sure has a lot of block out dates. I mean, in some cases, it has more block out dates than like the Enchant Key or something. Look at this. This is October. So there's a big fuss about the Dream Key. <laughs> online a lot of frustration even an oc register article because all of october is sold out right or booked up then disney added some more reservations and now even after adding those they're still almost gone again and it's just we're bit, not even mid-october yet again today is october 9th which is gone october 10th it's available 
then 19, 20, 21, and then 25 through 28, and that's it. So effectively, your all your weekends are the weekends. Yeah, basically every single weekend is blocked out until December 18th. Which makes the dream key turn into kind of like a believe key because you get some weekend days and some not weekend days, right? With the believe key. But the difference is those are actual blockout days on the believe key. This is just be no blockout days and there's just no no reservations available. So yeah, why would spend someone send, spend fourteen hundred dollars to go on weekends and have a, a promise of no blockout dates when there's a whole bunch of blockout dates here? I mean, look at this. I mean, this is crazy. Every single weekend is blocked out, besides tomorrow and to December eighteenth. And after that, it's uh, you can talk next year, but December twenty fifth. I'm, like I think within the first few hours of Dream Keys or Magic Keys being sold, December twenty fifth was already booked up. Which means it takes the spontaneousness away from Disneyland. Uh, you can't just go on the same day or even book a reservation on the same day because it's just gone. Unless you're a single day ticket holder, that's different. You can do a lot, um, and we're gonna go over that right uh, in a little bit. But you can do a lot with single day ticket holders there. So, but if you're a Believe Key or a Magic Key holder, uh, you get quite a lot of blackout dates for fourteen hundred dollars. So they should really. Do one of two things, in my opinion. This is why I didn't buy it, because I can only go on the weekends. And if I bought a Believe Key, like I said, I wouldn't, be going, I wouldn't be able to go on a single weekend until next year. So why would I spend $949 to do that now when I can buy single-day tickets for $209, $209 go on a weekend? In fact, I can go once a month. One, two, three, that's four months. Once a month. Spend two hundred nine dollars for park property. Park property because on go on weekends, and it comes out. That's four visits, and it comes out to about almost the same price as the the believe key. Um, and with that, and you wouldn't be able to go and I get four visits in versus zero visits in during that same amount of time. So, again, a single day tickets or multi day tickets may be a better use here. We're going to go over that. Um, but yeah, so again, look at this calendar. It's just so, uh, this is crazy to me that, not unexpected, but it's still crazy that this is happening. I mean, Disney, to fix this, should stop selling Magic Keys, which is something they definitely don't want to do because that's a loss of a lot of money. But if they're not going to stop selling Magic Keys, they should put the, up the percentage of the Magic Key reservation booklet or slash slots, so people actually can see, you know, get the value, get value for what they're spending on. Because if they don't, I bet you it's highly unlikely they'll renew that dream key in 2022. And if they, if they don't, and again, they might not even get an annual pass or a magic key again. They might downgrade. Like, well, I had my dream key, dream key, and went to. On the weekends, like once, I was only able to go once or twice the whole time I had it. So let's just get a believe key. Or if they're like, you know, I just adjust this going on the weekdays, which is again what Disney wants you to do because it's trying to spread out the crowds. Well, then all those dream or half most of those dream key holders might just become and enchant key holders. Why spend fourteen hundred dollars when you can spend four hundred dollars? And if you're going on the weekdays now, right? So that means Disney would lose about $1,000 per person, every person that does that, or entirely $1,400 $1, entirely if they decide to just not get a, a dream key or any key and uh, just get a single day ticket come once a year or something or once every few months instead of every single weekend like that. So Disney's playing a dangerous game here. I know this is something they wanted to do before the pandemic. I mean, we all saw it and called it with the Flex Pass, right? The Flex Pass came out with reservations. Um, and that's actually a pass I wanted to get because I was like, hmm, $600. There's no block of days, but you can you just have to make reservations. So I'm like, that's not bad. I liked that system. It was cool. And, it's, and it was a good option when it wasn't the only option, just like with mobile order. Mobile order is a, it's a fantastic option still. It's fast pass for food. But when it's the only option, you saw how bad it can get, right? The touch of Disney. For example, the Church of Disney at California Venture before the parks were open, mobile order was the only option. And people were waiting up to two hours for their food. Again, 
same thing with the reservations, I feel like. They're cool for one pass or maybe one ticket type. They can, like, I'd be fine with them getting rid of and That's what I like them to do. Get rid of the re reservation system, right? Because I personally, I don't mind the crowds. I know some people, if you get rid of the reservation system, it's going to be very crowded. So people don't like that. I never really minded the crowds. You just leave, right? Or you haven't any crowds, you just, you just leave. It gets too crowded, right? In my opinion. So I, so that's why I'm okay with getting rid of, rid of the reservation system. But you can do like a hybrid type system. Maybe introduce a new single day ticket type or multi day ticket type where you have to make reservations if you get that certain ticket type. Or then bring back the flex pass, right? Bring back the flex pass and make reservations for that. Just that pass. So it's kind of a balance because I feel like, like I said, with mobile order, great option on the side as a plan B, option B, but not as the sole option. And that's what's happening with res reservations here. Disney will probably never do those things because the reservations are not to benefit us, but to benefit them. They say it's to benefit us to make it less crowded. The parks are still pretty crowded. And even wait times now, just checked, it's 105 for Guardians of the Galaxy, 105 for Radio Swings Racers, 85 for Haunted Mansion Holiday. It's a busy weekend, right? And it's a reservations, and that today is a sold out day, right? Um, so it's not like not necessarily less crowded. It's a very busy day. Some, I mean, busier than some days when there weren't any reservations. So again, this is for Disney because with this, when they know how many reservations on in advance, they know how many people to employ that day, right? So instead of having too much staff on one day and just wasting money paying the people, I mean, I, I'm sorry, not my words. I believe. All cast members, they should get paid very nicely because they do a lot of work to make the magic happen. But this is what Disney's thinking. Like, hmm, why have, um, let's say, why have like 10 or 20 cast members work the credit coaster when it's supposed to be a low attendance day? So maybe we just need 10 cast members working the credit coaster because it's not going to be crowded. The wait times might not even go past 20 minutes. So we don't need 20 people there. Um, we just have 10. Same thing with restaurants. Blue Bayou. Why not? Why have 50 people working there, cast members working there, when, you yeah, know, reservations aren't not booked up? It probably won't be a busy day at Blue Bayou. So let's just not, let's not, let's not schedule people for that day. We can save a few bucks here and there, right? Also, Food and supplies. How much food do we need that day? Oh, it's going to be a low crowded day. Oh, well, that's fine. Let's just order half the food and you save money there. Um, and also, um, this is where it does help. The only way it kind of helps the guests is because it spreads the crowds to the weekday. But it also helps them financially because then they can spread their budget accordingly as well and kind of plan for the future. So that's why the reservations are there. Um, and that's why he said, Chapek said, be the backbone, uh, it is the backbone of the company, of the parks, because it is. And this has every single uh, decision. How many people to employ that day or schedule that day? How much food and merchandise to buy for that day? Um, and yeah, just how, uh, just that, even the park hours, right? They can just change the park hours. Oh, it's not gonna be too busy. Why are we staying open until midnight? Let's just close at 10 today. Oh, it's going to be busy on the weekend? Okay. Let's stay open until midnight that day. They can change the park hours on a whim. Universal does it all the time without reservations. Uh, multiple, times, multiple times this year, even at the Taste of Universal event, this was closed like at 6 or 7, and all of a sudden I got there it closed at 8 or 9. I'm like, oh, wow, because it was busier than anticipated. And that's what... Instead, Disney wants to do instead of making decisions like that on the whim on the day of, they want to make those hour and those park hour and stuff decisions well in advance, and that's why they want you, us, to um to reserve our date. The only problem is if people are using the reservations as placeholders, and then all of a sudden reservations open up the day day before like a whole bunch because people are like, oh gosh, I can't go there, and they cancel, then you know it kind of messes up the attendance of what they're expecting. But either way, that's why the reservation system's here. That's why also I don't think the dream key is worth it. But let's take a look um, lastly at the um, 
single day ticket holders. Let's see here. Let's take a look at single day tickets and see their calendars. And this is why Disney probably favors them more because they get more money per guest in the single day, single day ticket holder. And also, those are people more likely to be visiting from out of state. They're planning their trips months in advance. So they want to have a whole pool of tickets for them so they won't be disappointed when they get here and then, you know, they can't go. Single day ticket holders, they have one park per day. It's sold out this coming week, but still a decent amount of reservations for October. A lot of Disneyland starting park because of California Adventure has, you know, Oogie Boogie Bash on these days. And it's the Halloween park. Oh, yeah. November, both parks completely open. This is the start of the holidays. This is a holiday itself. This is the start of the holidays at the Disneyland Resort. Completely open. It's up then to December as well. Christmas Day. Christmas Day with the uh, Dream Key was sold out. And well, all passes are, are booked on Christmas Day. Well, blocked or booked. Oh, not single day ticket holders can wide open all December. January etc. So, and if you go to, that's for a single day, it's for, um, on Park, but it's go to Park Harbor. Park Harbor, even more available. 14th, 17th, November, every single day, December, every single day, including Christmas, January, and February. So, looking very good for single day ticket holders out there, looking very bad for Magic Key holders, and so I suggest getting a magic, um, getting a, um, a multi-day ticket instead of a, or a single day ticket instead of a magic key right now, because uh, it just doesn't seem, until they kind of bounce that situ the res reservation system and calendar out, I feel like it's kind of a waste of money, unless you want to go during the weekdays when you get the enchant key or, uh, or the um, magic key. But... What do you guys think? Do you have a magic key? Do you have frustration? Have you been having frustrations with reservations? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, let me know what would you do to try to fix or mitigate the situation. Do you want reservations? Do you want to get rid of them entirely? Let me know in the comments below. As always, um, if you liked the video, press that thumbs up button. And subscribe for more theme park updates. And as always, have a fantastic day.